How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to add tooltips to your website using HTML and CSS. Now, we are going to be using a library to achieve this called tippy.js. It is a fantastic library which works out of the box to get tooltips on your web page. But if you're interested in uh, making your own tooltips, I've got a whole video dedicated to that one, but I do recommend that you actually go ahead and use the library for your actual websites and applications. So what does this look like? What am I gonna be showing you how to do in this video? Well, it looks something like this. You can hover over an element and the tooltip is gonna appear right there. Uh, now. Tippy.js works out of the box. There is very minimal that needs to be done in order for it to work, but there is a lot of customization if you need it. So we can see here that on hovering over, we get an arrow by default. We also have a nice fade animation, which you can change if you like. But also, more importantly, it's going to handle clipping for you. As you can see, that add tooltip text here label is quite a long string, but it is automatically being shifted to the right side to avoid it being cut off on the edge here. So a very useful library which works out of the box and I'm sure you guys are going to find it really useful. So I'm gonna be leaving this linked down below um, for you to of course follow along. But the very first thing to do is to start on this page right here, which doesn't currently have the tooltip implemented. I'm gonna be showing you how to do it. So let's begin by installing tippy.js. So you can use a package manager, so NPM if your environment supports it, but for simplicity and to cater to um, everyone, I'm gonna be using the two script tags and the CDN uh, installation. So let's copy these two tags here, go back inside or go inside the index.html file. I'm going to simply uh, place those two script tags on the bottom here, save this back in the browser, refresh. There is no tooltip, but uh, Tippy is ready to go. So how do we use Tippy? Well, a script tag underneath the two imports is a good start. And we're gonna be saying Tippy just like this. This is the Tippy constructor. And we're gonna provide a CSS selector. Let's say for all button elements on the page, we're gonna enable the tooltip. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, hover over, and the tooltip is enabled. But of course, there is no content inside of it. So how do we add content? Well, we're gonna be using the data-tippy-content attribute. We'll say this is equal to, um, and then we can just say here, some tooltip text, okay? I'll save this, go back in the browser here, refresh, and we get some tooltip text in the tooltip label, okay? So that is how easy it is to get your tooltip working on your web page. Now, because this here is a CSS selector, you can, for example, say hash btn save changes, and it's gonna work because we're saying this ID should have the tooltip enabled. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and it still works. But to make it simple for us, wherever there is a data tippy content data attribute, we want to enable the tooltip. It makes sense, right? If you have this attribute specified, you probably want a tooltip to display. So let's change the selector to instead say every element that has the data tippy content attribute, let's enable the tooltip. Now I'm using brackets here. Once again, CSS selector, which says basically an element with this attribute present on it. Save this back in the browser, refresh, and it still works. Okay, fantastic. Now, I wanna take you through the tippy props because when you call tippy like this, you can also specify some props. For example, duration, 1000. It'll take one second or 1000 milliseconds to have the animation play. Save this, back in the browser, refresh, hover over. It takes one second for that animation to be fulfilled. You've also got things such as, uh, uh, what's it called? Trigger. You can say trigger, then click. Save this back in the browser, refresh now. If you click on the button, it's gonna enable the tooltip as opposed to having to hover over it instead, okay? You've also got things such as follow cursor. You can say true, save this, refresh. Now, if I click to enable the tooltip, 
it's going to follow my cursor. So, of course, useful for larger elements, all right? So let's put this back to the normal trigger. So not click, but instead hover, get rid of that. I'll also just get rid of, um, let's get rid of the follow cursor and make the duration uh, 500. Now, there are many other props for you to explore. I highly recommend that you read the documentation here. These are all the props which you can apply to your tippy constructor. There is a lot of things going on here which you may find useful for your own application. So read the docs and get used to some of these props. Now, I want to talk about theming because, of course, this here is the standard theme. You get the normal font, the normal background and so on. So how do we actually style the tooltip, uh, sorry, the tippy components, okay? So going back inside here, let's go inside my CSS file. Now, we're going to be targeting the tippy-box class because basically whenever you hover over here, if you go into the element section, on the bottom of the body here, you'll see that upon hovering over, it's going to create a new div right down here, right? Do it again. That is your tippy element, all right? So we're going to be targeting that using tippy-box. Let's change the font family. We're going to say font family equal to inter and then sans serif, okay? Might also say font weight of bold. Save this, go back in the browser, refresh, hover over, and we get that font uh, changes being applied there. So that is the way you can uh, have your own styles on tippy. You can also, for example, say background. Let's make a background of my decode green color, 009578. Save this back in the browser, refresh, and we have that changed background color. Now, of course, the arrow is not yet changed. I'll get to that very shortly, but just demonstrating here that it's plain CSS if you want to style up your tippy um, tooltips, okay? For more info, check out the documentation here. Go into the themes section. I'm going to be covering uh, your own custom themes right now, but before I do that, have a look at this, this HTML markup. So this is the markup of your of your tooltip, right? So I'm targeting the tippy box in my example, but you've also got things like tippy content if you want to, for some reason, target the text directly, okay? So I've covered this way of styling your tippy tooltips. I do recommend, and so does the documentation, it recommends to create your own theme, okay? So that's gonna be the recommended way to change your styling. So let's, let's, let's create a decode theme for the tippy tooltips. Now, you probably want to make your own theme per application. For example, if you're building a shopping list app, you'd probably make a theme called shopping list, right? So let's specify a theme called decode. In the props, we're going to say theme equal to decode just like this, okay? Save this go inside the CSS file and we're going to change these lines a little bit, right? We're going to say tippy box, then using the brackets once again, data dash theme is equal to decode, okay? So for the decode theme, we're going to use these CSS properties. Now, we do actually need to include the tilde character right here, all right, for the theme name. So make sure to include that there. There's an explanation on the documentation if you're interested, but just make sure to include that right there. And now if I save this, go back in the browser, refresh, we get the same results, even though we have that specific styling on that theme, because of course we said theme of decode. If this was gone, save this back in the browser, the theme is now gone as well. So that is your theme here in the JavaScript. And of course the matching theme styles in the CSS. Now, that is how to style up your font and your background. How do we style up the arrow itself? Because of course, it is currently still dark, like I mentioned earlier, okay? So to fix that, I'm gonna firstly define a CSS property. We're gonna say dash dash background dash color. This here is like a variable in CSS. We can reuse it, okay? We're gonna say hash 009578 once again. Then we're going to be using this CSS variable down here. We're going to say var, then simply provide that um, that property name or the variable name. Yeah, save this back in the browser, and we get the same result. So, in terms of that arrow, the reason why we specified this variable is because we're going to need to reference the background color multiple times. Okay, we're going to say here 
dot tippy dash box. Then say data dash seam is equal to decode. Well, again, with that with that tilde character, right? Data theme decode. Then say again square brackets data placement. Then caret symbol equal to top. Okay. So with this here, we're targeting the arrow for the top placement because you can you can target each arrow individually depending if it's the left side, right side, bottom, top, right? So I'm saying let's target the top placement arrow. We'll say dot tippy dash arrow, then colon, colon, before. Now, it's a long selector, okay? But this here is in the documentation. This is how they recommend that you actually style the arrow, okay? So for that, we can say border dash top dash color, and then use the variable there, background color, okay? That's for the top placement. Let's copy this three more times. So that was uh, that was done using highlight, then shift alt up on the keyboard or shift alt down. Now what's easy about this is you can just simply copy or select this top string, then say control D or command D on, on, on Mac, I believe, then just say here, bottom. So it's gonna target this bottom or this uh, part, this part, so bottom, then border bottom color, top, control D, target this one, and we can say left, and then go here, and we can say right. Save this back in the browser, refresh here, and we get the background color applied to the arrow as well. That is how to add tooltips to your website using tippy.js. If this video helped you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.